Hello, my name is Scott. I'm 44 years old. I live in Lexington, Kentucky, and I am about to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Um, this will be my 2021 Appalachian Trail uh, northbound through hike. I plan to start April 1st at um, Amalekoa Falls State Park and do the approach trail and then uh, start on Springer Mountain and go all the way to Mount Katahdin in Maine and then finish the hike. <clears throat> so um, this is my gear and introduction video. <clears throat> on my person, as far as gear goes, I will be hiking in just regular old Nike running shorts. Um, Exficio boxer briefs. Um, this is my hiking shirt. Um, I like these because they are convertible from short to long sleeves really easily. It's got snap buttons so you can cool yourself off easily. Um, it's uh, made of a cotton polyester blend so it will uh, dry out quickly. Um, and I like the uh, I like the collar. I think it looks a little more polished when you go into town. Um, <clears throat> I will have my fanny pack. Inside my fanny pack, I'll have my phone right here for quick access. I'll be using my phone to video. That's what I'm videoing on now. It's a um, Sam Samsung S9 Plus. <clears throat> then uh, in here, I keep my identification and my money. And this little device, Blue Maestro um, temperature disc. It's a neat little device. Uh, I have Lane at Lane's World to thank for introducing me to this. Um, basically, it's a, a temperature sensor. Uh, it has a battery life of one year, and you can connect to it via your phone um, over Bluetooth and get instantaneous temperature, humidity, and uh, dew point calculation. It also holds uh, logs and you can download the logs to your phone and you can look at statistics um, over a period of time. Say you select the period of your trip then you can look at you know the lowest uh, temperature, the highest, the highest humidity and so on and when it happened. Really neat little device. I totally recommend it. Um, I got it for like $32 I think on Amazon. Really neat piece. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Also in my fanny pack, keep my beanie on ready. I don't have any hair, so keeps my head warm when I'm hiking and it's cold and uh, I sleep in it. Then I have my uh, Merino wool buff. Um, these things have all sorts of uses. It can be a face mask. It can keep your head warm, your neck warm. Um, you do whatever with it. These things have a lot of uses. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, here's another important piece of gear that I keep in the fanny pack so that I can straighten out this mess on my face. Um, and I keep a USB-C cord in here so I can uh, quick charge my phone um, when the opportunity arises. So now for uh, what's in my backpack. First of all, the backpack is a Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, Junction 2400. It's a uh, about a 40 liter backpack, and uh, it's not the lightest in the world. I think it weighs like 1.8 pounds, but it's uh, Dyneema composite fabric, so it's um, really durable and mostly waterproof. Um, I've never really tested that feature of it, but uh, it's comfortable and uh, it seems to be pretty durable and uh, it suits my needs very well. So on the outside for quick deployment, we have the um, Gossamer Gear uh, umbrella. I really like the umbrella because you can deploy it quickly. Uh, it, you, you don't uh, heat up like you do when you wear a raincoat. Um, 
you know, so you can just deploy it quickly for a quick shower and keep the rain off of you and your backpack. And uh, it has lots of uses. <clears throat> so uh, for hydration, I have two one liter water bottles. Those are smart water bottles. <clears throat> Let's see, also on the outside of my pack, I have my cold soap jar. This is just a standard uh, peanut butter jar. I keep my spoon. It's a Sea to Summit uh, titanium spoon. I have a Frog Togs raincoat. These things are great. They're cheap. They're like 20 bucks. They are not durable. Um, but they work as an excellent uh, raincoat and a wind shell, a wind shell also. Um, also have a uh, Dyneema uh, rain kilt. This keeps my lower half dry. It acts as a place to sit. Um, I carry this instead of like a, one of those uh, little butt seats. I have uh, extra water storage. This is a um, two liter bladder. It's easier to fill up than the water bottles and creeks and whatnot. And uh, it's, I use that. And then I use a uh, Sawyer squeeze and filter the water. <clears throat> I have the uh, Deuce of Spades trowel for digging cat holes. I have a, a foot brush. Um, I like to uh, stop and get all the mud out from uh, underneath my toenails and, and keep my feet clean. Works well for that. Now uh, inside the pack. <clears throat> right on the top I keep my food bag. Um, it's a light AF Dyneema food bag, and I'll, I'll go through the food that's in it later on. <clears throat> I have my trusty Hyperlite Mountain here, um, eight and a half foot square tarp. And so uh, I use a modular shelter system. This is the roof. And then um, this is the floor. This is a, uh, just a rectangular sheet of uh, 1.0 Dyneema. I bought this from uh, Ripstop by the Roll. And then my sister-in-law sewed a seam all the way around it. Um, I, I was using Polycro plastic, uh, which worked really well. It's super light. But I thought I'd give Dyneema a try because um, you know it's a little more durable, hopefully. I've got several trips on this piece right here, and uh, it's, it's great so far. So dynamic ground sheets, then I have my, um, my tarp stakes, and uh, some extra cordage in here. I have uh, eight um, mini groundhogs, as well as um, I've got a couple of these little plastic cup tops. That I can use. I can put um, these on the end of a stick and use it inside my tarp to prop it up. Um, <clears throat> I have one pitch for uh, you know severe storms that requires this. You use sticks underneath to hold it up and then you, you pull it all the way around you tight to the ground and uh, that works really well. <clears throat> so uh, this is my um, Footwear, which I'll talk about later. Uh, this is a pair of uh, Earth Runner sandals and then oven bags. Like I said, I'll talk about that later. <clears throat> this is my ditty bag. I've got my toothbrush. I've got a first aid kit in there. I've got uh, a small pair of scissors, nail clippers, an extra lighter, some uh, some clips for um, hanging up clothes to dry on a clothesline. 
So I wanted to add a little more detail um, for my ditty bag. Um, if you'll note, I carry a um, cat can stove because it's so light. Why not have the option to use alcohol? Um, I've got hand sanitizer in there. Um, this is my first aid kit along with my self-care kit. Um, if you'll note, there is no uh, toilet paper. This is actually... This is actually tender for starting fires, um, but there's no toilet paper. Um, I'm a huge fan of the um, Backwoods Bidet. I think it's um, a lot more conformant with um, Leave No Trace. I think it's um, it gives you a much cleaner feeling. Um, I think it's much more sustainable. Um, if you don't know what a uh, backwoods bidet is, then uh, you should search for it on YouTube. Um, it will change your life in terms of uh, comfort and sustainability um, in the outdoors. Here's my electronics ditty bag. I've got an anchor uh, charger, a dual port charger. I've got charge cords in there and I've got a couple of extra pieces for the Sawyer. Squeeze adapters. Then uh, here's my cook kit. The cook kit is basically a, a lighter, um, uh, one of the BRS 3000 stoves. Got it on Amazon for $15 or $20. Um, I've got a Tokes 550 uh, titanium pot, and inside I keep a uh, Four and a half, uh, excuse me, uh, seven point four ounce uh, fuel cylinder. Sometimes I use alcohol. Um, I've got an assortment of stoves, but on the AT, I think this is going to be my choice. One thing I don't like about these is it's, it, you know, when you're in the woods, you can't really tell how much fuel you have, and uh, that's definitely an advantage that alcohol has over gas, in my opinion. <clears throat> I have uh, next up is the last piece of my modular uh, shelter system. This is a uh, Mount Laurel Designs Bug Bibby. Um, and I have to admit, the uh, I used to be a hammock camper, and um, I watched uh, I watched uh, Evan's backpacking videos and uh, Jupiter hikes over the past couple of years, and uh, they basically introduced me to tarps. And uh, I enjoy fiddling with the tarp. I enjoy the flexibility of it. I like being able to just uh, simply deploy only what you need. Um, cowboy camping is actually my favorite uh, mode. I like to just throw out the Dyneema sheet and uh, throw out my, my sleeping pad and my, uh, and my quilt and then just look up the stars. So uh, really enjoy that system. It's lightweight, very flexible. <clears throat> And uh, I'm getting into, uh, I have a Nylaflume pack liner in here to keep, uh, you know, for that last little bit of insurance against the, uh, the waterproof um, properties of this pack. You know, I don't trust it 100%, but, um, you know, so this gives me a little insurance. <clears throat> I've got my puffy jacket in here. This is a, um, an enlightened equipment, uh, Torrid, Apex, something like that. It's a uh, synthetic puffy jacket. It's really warm, and uh, since it's synthetic, you can get it wet, and it'll still maintain its uh, insulation properties. That's really nice. So then I have for my base layer, I have uh, Smart Wool 250 layer, uh, 250 weight tights. I've got just some generic, uh, I guess it's carbon. Uh, merino wool long sleeve shirt for base layer. I've got an extra pair of uh, drawers in here. I have two pairs of socks. One is a pair of uh, merino wool darn tough socks. And then I've got a uh, pair of fleece tabby socks for wearing with sandals. Um, <clears throat> which I'll talk about in a bit. Then my, um, my quilt. I 
quilt is a uh, enlightened equipment revelation uh 20 degree quilt big fan of this thing it's super warm packs down it's lightweight um it's got uh straps on the bottom to keep it tucked in around me very nicely it's a great piece of gear um, then we come to my sleeping pads i've got two sleeping pads um, the first is a piece of reflectix um, i learned about this stuff from uh, evan's backpacking video big fan um, basically what i do is lay this on the ground and then i will lay some leaves or forest floor duct on top of it for insulation added insulation and for um, added comfort and then i will lay my dyneema ground sheet over that and then on top of the dyneema ground sheet i will deploy this guy which is my um, gossamer gear eighth inch sleeping pad i um <clears throat> Originally heard about this from uh, Jupiter Hikes, and uh, Jupiter is extreme. He he uses just this by itself as a sleeping pad, and uh, not quite there yet. But uh, I really like this is a, this is a great little piece of gear. It weighs nothing. It provides very very little insulation properties. It's more about just keeping me off the Dyneema, honestly. Um, it gives me a nice comfortable surface to uh, to lay on. Oh, and I almost forgot. For uh, extra power, up here in my hip pocket, I have a 21,000 milliamp um, anchor battery pack. That powers my headlight, which is right here, and recharges my cell phone. So this is my headlight. It's a Nightcore NU25 rechargeable headlamp. Um, great little piece of gear. And then I keep a uh, Leatherman Super Tool 200 with me. Um, this thing has more uses than I could imagine. Um, the saw comes in handy. Um, if I had to uh, cut sticks for my tarp or whatever got a file that I could use for my nails um, it's it's got plenty of uses um, so uh, that concludes what I carry in my pack so uh, I said I would talk about my footwear um, I hike 100% barefoot um, I would not recommend this for anyone um, I've been at it for about five years, <clears throat> and uh, it takes quite a bit of time to get acclimated to, uh, to being barefoot. Um, there's definitely a huge learning curve as, long, as well as a, uh, a physical, a little bit of physical adaptation that has to take place. Um, <clears throat> that being said, I absolutely love it and uh, will never go back. Um, my feet are stronger than they've ever been. Um, I don't have any um, or very very little knee and joint pain when I hike barefoot and I just like the way it feels um, I like walking over the different surfaces uh, in the woods especially leaves um, and sand um, gravel is my least favorite for obvious reasons so uh, what I do carry I do carry a pair of sandals or I, actually normally I don't carry any footwear at all uh, on shorter trips but for the Appalachian Trail um, I think it's going to be smart to carry a pair of sandals and uh, as a backup system so I'll have the sandals for uh, three different cases um, the biggest one is other people uh, when I go into a town other people are freaked out by bare feet so I'll uh, I'll wear these to, uh, to go into restaurants and businesses or whatever I need to do. Um, the second case when I would need them is in case I got a bad uh, lesion on the bottom of my foot. I needed to be able to uh, protect it 
and heal it. Um, then I'll, I'll wear these during that period. Um, and the other, the other reason I would need these is extreme cold. Um, when the ground is frozen, uh, you know, 32 degrees or less, um, there's a danger of getting frostbite on the bottom of your feet. And uh, <clears throat> so usually if it's too cold to stand, uh, you know, if the temperature is too cold and it's uncomfortable, then I'll put these guys on to insulate my feet from the ground. And I'm usually good to, to around 20 degrees and then about 20 degrees or so I'll put on socks to keep my feet warm. And, uh, and snow, snow is a whole different animal. You know, what I'll do in that case is I will have the sandals for insulation from the ground. Then I use put on a merino wool sock, and then I'll take and slide on, um, these are oven bags. I'll put an oven bag on as a, um, a vapor layer. And then I put another, uh, I put another sock on the outside to protect the oven bag. So I've got merino wool, which will wick away the water. Um, then I have, uh, vapor layer which is the oven bag and then i have another layer of uh, socks on the outside to protect the oven bags and i found that works really well i've tested it extensively in snow and uh, you know 17 15 degree weather i hiked all day and uh, actually my feet got hot it should be everything that i need on the appalachian trail i don't even know that i'll hit snow there's a possibility in like the smoky mountains and then we'll see how it goes also worth mentioning is uh, I have I just finished a through hike 100% barefoot the uh, foothills trail and uh, I didn't even take any footwear at all with me because I knew I wouldn't be going to town and I had a little bit of uh, hip pain one day and it I just stretched a little bit and it worked itself out Wanted to get into my food bag a little bit too and uh, talk about that. So uh, inside my food bag, I keep a odor-proof sack. And then um, I am, I've been vegan for about four years, something like that. And uh, so my plan is to um, send, have my wife send resupply boxes. Um, until I get a good feel for what resupply would be like on the trail. And uh, I've actually already invested uh, quite a bit of money in food. So I'd like to go through it here. Um, <clears throat> I have some items that I keep generally here. Let's see, um, olive oil. It's a good source of calories and adds flavor. I keep uh, daily vitamins, keep um, some vitamin C. This is uh, electrolyte tablets and then uh, nutritional yeast. And then I usually keep some kind of condiments like uh, mild sauce from Taco Bell, something like that. So what I do with my food is uh, I break it into individual uh, one gallon bags per day to sort of ration it out and keep it all um, organized. Let me get into one of the days here. <clears throat> I just threw a day together here to just to give you an idea. Um, so first thing in the morning, I usually get up and boil some water and have a cup of coffee. First thing. Um, then I will set up in my cold soaking jar, I'll set up um, oats and chia seeds and then half or less of my trail mix. And this is just um, a bunch of nuts that I threw together. There's no chocolate or anything like that in there. Um, here's the cold soak jar that I put all that in. And I usually I'll, I'll put water in it and then I will take off and start hiking and then usually around uh, 10 or 10 30 something like that I'll pull over and uh, take a little break and have some breakfast 
I don't really eat lunch on the tra on the uh, trail. Instead, what I'll do is eat. Um, I'll snack on the rest of the trail mix that's in there, and then I usually have uh, about three bars a day. And then uh, for dinner, I'll do something like this. This is um, I learned about these from uh, Jupiter Hikes, and I tried them and absolutely loved them. These are uh, pre-cooked dehydrated pinto beans with no salt added. And uh, <clears throat> so they taste basically like pinto beans that have been cooking for a couple days. Um, you can cold soak them. You can, I like them hot. So what I'll do is uh, for dinner, I will heat up a, a pot of water. I'll dump these guys into my cold soaking jar and I'll put some uh, olive oil in there with it and then some nutritional yeast and then uh, some mild sauce or something like that to spice it up a little bit. I'll dump my warm water in here and let it rehydrate and then, uh, and then eat. Um, I bought 25 pounds of these things. And uh, so my plan is to use these. I'll use um, probably uh, couscous. Um, rice you know some some different uh, i've 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 got a whole bunch of uh, pre-cooked dehydrated food that i will uh, that i can make meals out of but i'd say primarily i'll end up eating these mostly they're uh you know they've got a lot of fiber a lot of um a lot of good stuff in them and and, and i i like them uh of course over the course of six months i'm gonna get tired of them pretty quickly so uh I'm going to work in some variety there. But that's a basic uh, uh, day's meal right there. Here I have uh, deployed the tarp and a simple A-frame. Um, using the uh, sticks on the end of support. Normally you'd have trees available or something, but say you're up on a bald or whatever. In a field or whatever and don't have... Uh, Supports so you can just carry a couple sticks with you do something like this Here's a look on the inside